afternoon, everyone. We're waiting for other participants to join us. The event will commence very soon. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Penelope Look, Creative Director of Crafts and Peel. Thank you so much for joining us today for the craft demonstration as part of the special events of Creations and Living Metal, a virtual thematic exhibition at London Craft Week, showcasing over 10 pieces of traditional and contemporary metal crafts from Hong Kong, working with a myriad of metals, such as copper, brass, silver, tin, and galvanized iron. This program is organized by Crafts on Peel and co-sponsored by the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office London. And I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Crafts on Peel to you. Crafts on Peel is a charitable non-profit foundation in Hong Kong that aims to revive, reinterpret, and perpetuate traditional crafts by fostering collaborations between traditional crafts and contemporary artisans. Through exchange of techniques and apprenticeship, we breathe new life into traditional crafts and nurture a new generation of artisans. And now I would like to invite Mr. Gilbert Law, Director General of the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office London to say a few words and begin our session. Hello everyone. Welcome to Creations and Living Metal. The Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office is excited to support Crafts on Peel to participate in this year's London Craft Week, bringing this virtual exhibition to craft lovers around the world. In the Chinese tradition, Metal is one of the five elements of the universe, the stability of which hinges on the balance of these elements. For many Hong Kong people, metal itself represents a delicate balance of practical and poetic nature. Our history of metal work has served as a source of daily necessities, such as cooking wares, utensils, and gates. Concurrently, Metal work also satisfies our needs of beauty and aesthetics as expressed in jewelries and sculptures. Filled with innovative ideas and oriental heritage, the crafts displayed in this exhibition are the fruits of collaboration 
between contemporary artisans and traditional craftsmen. In addition, as exemplified by our artist Eva Chen, who studied jewellery and silversmithing in the UK, the exhibition celebrates the cultural exchanges between the two places with a fine integration of modality and antiquity, as well as the meeting of East and West. This exhibition showcases not only our rich history of metalwork, but also what makes Hong Kong so special as Asia's world city. Similar to metal, Hong Kong has its twofold attraction, functionally serving as an international financial center and global trading hub, while also vibrantly keeping people entertained and inspired year round with a thriving art scene. Finally, this exhibition also commemorates the 25th anniversary of the establishment of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. We hope to unfold more May in Hong Kong creativity to our friends in the UK and beyond in the years to come. In the meantime, please enjoy the exhibition and demonstrations proudly presented by our artistic talent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Long. Next, I would like to introduce Master Peter Ng to you. Master Peter Ng, Master Ng started learning chiseling at the age of 12. He is a full-time traditional craftsman, specialized in metal engraving with more than 50 years of experience. Master Peter Ng will host a craft demonstration today to share the making process of his work, Four Seasons, a copper pot decorated with hammer and chisel engraving, which featured in this exhibition. He will also share his story as a traditional craftsman. And after the craft demonstration, we will have a short Q&A session with the master. Please share your questions with us via the Q&A box. Now, please enjoy the craft demonstration. Oh, hi, Ufu Man. I am from 1968. 就是入這個批發行業 就好像將你設計到另外一件很精彩的物件 香港的社會經濟未是那麼發達 我們拍完花之後,就要脫毛 
係誒以前誒流傳落嚟嘅，唔同嘅花紋，也用唔同嘅工具嘅。咁大致上咧，三個種類啫。誒，我哋叫做三角座啦，誒彎座啦，同埋平座。唐草文咧，就我哋咧就係誒以呢個誒大自然個花草嘅姿態，而去誒設計一個唔同形狀，擺一個適合嘅物件裏邊，啊，令到佢有一種生動感。嗱，而家我批咗呢個咧，就用三角座嘅。咁呢個三角座批咧，就佢呢個坑咧就比較深啲，喺呢個位置咧再用支彎做，做一個咧。半邊側側地嘅結咁樣，咁令到佢就冇咁單啲。如果用個身體去咧扭動輔助佢咧，咁佢會咧就喐嘅角度咧就大好多嘅。好似而家咁樣咧，咁個身可以轉。批花係唔需要好大力度，咁所以咧佢嗰個重量唔需要好高嘅。而家呢個隨便咧，就好似好有曲線，好似人體學咁樣咧。其實佢係一路不停咧，就係長年累月咧去摩擦啦、接觸咧，就形成嘅。今次嘅作品咧係四季，係我同丙記同氣合作，就係、是、我哋會做梅蘭谷竹啦，有著要用唔同嘅技巧。我以往做咧係好大分別，一個面積嚟講相差好遠。咁因為飾物嚟講始終有細點咧，咁而呢個銅器呢個四季咧就相當之大嘅。咁而家嗰個器皿咧，個攬堂嘅狀態咧注滿曬噶啦。咁點解要注滿佢咧？鞏固佢同埋固定佢。而家咧，咁我可以開始咧將佢固定喺呢個座度。咁好啦，做呢個梅花呢，因為首先睇個構圖呢，佢係一個好大嘅粗草樹枝。咁而喺樹枝中呢，就係、是、一朵一朵比較細嘅梅花。咁所以呢次用嘅工具呢，就用兩支，一個係彎座，一個係三角座。咁用三角座批呢個樹冠嗰陣時呢，因為要帶啲粗草嘅形象，咁所以呢。就係、是、會係啲線條係比較參差啲嘅，就唔能夠咁順滑。因為佢蘭花嘅樹葉咧，就係誒不停左右咁扭動嘅。咁而彎作嚟講咧，佢又係嗰個扭動咧，就係會配合到呢一個線條。睇落去好似咦咁簡單啦、啊，咁其實就係蘭花，就係、是。其實係越簡單咧，係越難誒、呃、掌握誒嗰、呃那個花誒、呃、形狀嘅。反而咧，譬如菊花啊，或者竹咧，咁你睇嚟哇，好密雜雜咁。咁但係佢反而咧嗰、那個就誒、呃、困難度就仲低過批蘭花嘅。竹嚟講咧，佢有少少彎彎啲嘅形，唔能夠太直嘅。如果唔係咧，唔會有個搖風擺住嗰個情況出現嘅。批嗰陣時咧就要順住有少少彎度，咁而同埋做到咧就有一節一節嘅感覺，所以佢唔係完全做一個好長嘅位置嘅。咁我哋首先做呢個菊花葉咧係用啲彎作嘅，因為佢咧葉咧就比較係短促而轉彎，咁大多數咧我哋都係啲彎作，做咗個花嘅形狀先。批咗有一個外形咧，就一層一層咧就接駁上去，咁令到佢嗰個花葉啊，咁好似一片搭一片，一片搭一片。呢、這個位置咧，我就批糖草花，因為花朵咧就佢嗰、那個、呃、可以話個形態咧，每一朵、呃、有唔同，個線條咧就唔使咁齊整。咁而呢個糖草咧，尤其是而家呢個位置咧，就儘量咧會會平均咧，就會好適合啲嘅。已經批花完成啦，咁啊將佢脱毛。
咁而脱毛嘅過程咧，就需要咧，就係、是、好有耐性咧。咁而家用啲貨咧，就、呃、慢慢慢慢令到佢裏面有少少融化啲冷糖，先拎佢出嚟。其實呢個挑戰咧，就我覺得就比我誒好好寶貴經驗嘅。咁原來我做咁多年咧，以為咧。就話啊，乜嘢都難到我啦！原來完完全全咧，同以往做嘅要重新學習一樣，係好有意思。咁咧，現今我覺得咧，批發咧可以咧，就異估而今中西合璧嘅舊嘅事物，同埋新嘅花紋、舊嘅技巧，同埋新嘅工具咧，做出啲係完全係想像唔到嘅花紋I hope you enjoy the craft demonstration. Let's start our Q&A session. So we received quite a number of questions from our audience. Uh, so we are going to select a few to share with you. 师傅啊，我哋嘅诶观众咧就问咗啲问题，咁我亦都拣咗几条咧同你诶分享，咁我都好希望你可以分享下你嘅一啲心得，好唔好啊？ Okay, so the first question that we've got from the audience is, uh, do you have any comments or suggestions to share for those who are new to engraving? Sifu, ah, the first question is like this. For the beginner engraver, you have any advice or suggestions to share for the beginner? Yes, for the beginner engraver, 最緊要係有耐性，同埋能夠刻苦耐勞，咁啊不斷重複去練習，先至可以掌握到純熟嘅技巧。Okay, good. Okay, so the master shared with us that、um, endurance would be the key for、uh, learning the craft、uh, of engraving. So only by practicing repeatedly can the learners acquire A stable level of techniques. Okay, the second question that we've got from the audience is:、uh, How are the skills and techniques of the previous generation complementing the capabilities of young generation? See what? The second question of the audience is: How are the skills and techniques of the previous generation complementing the 點樣可以同新生代嘅能力去互補啊？嗯，誒係嗱，當然上一代嘅工藝咧喺技巧方面啊受到肯定嘅，咁配合而家嘅資訊發達，參考世界各地不同嘅方法，咁可以達到能力互補嘅。Well, okay, thank you. So, Master Eng shared with us. Uh, that skills and techniques from the past could act as a grounding force for craftsmanship in the modern days. So as we can make you good use of the information technologies these days uh, to facilitate development of craftsmanship, for instance, uh, we could take reference from the engraving knowledge and techniques from overseas, for example, fostering the growth and variations of different traditional crafts. So、um, the last question that we've selected from the audience is, let's see,、uh, does craft inspire you in your daily life? This is a very interesting question.、Um, Steve, wow, we chose the third question of the audience, of the audience. So, what kind of influence does craft have on your daily life? Do you have any influence? 當我咧就係誒投入一件工藝嘅作品，令我啟發到喺個過程中係可以忘卻煩憂同埋享受工作。Okay, so、uh, Master Eng shared with us, yes, the process of、um, making a craft work is very similar to modern day the meditation. Okay,、uh, as he can really get concentrated, letting go of all of his worries. 
while devoting himself to creating something special. So that's the end of our Q&A session. And now please enjoy the virtual guided tour of Creations of Living Metals. Organized by Crafts and Peel, co-sponsored by Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office London, Creations and Livens Metal showcases the works by traditional craftsmen and contemporary artisans from Hong Kong, working across a myriad of metals such as copper, brass, silver, tin, and galvanized iron. The exhibition reveals the rich history of metalwork and novel adaptations of those traditional techniques responding to the demands of modern day. While contemporary artisans strive to convey our culture and traditions through the elegance, strength, and durability of their metal creation. The ancients loved painting, calligraphy, poetry, Chinese opera, and incense appreciation, similar to today's enriching and multifaceted lifestyle. In the ancient East Asian region, these leisures and pleasures were important rituals and even part of their social system. Yuan, meaning circle in Chinese, symbolizes contentment and perfection, unity and harmony. Gamzar began his apprentice journey by learning the basic techniques of crafting galvanized iron from Master Michael Yu. This binary quality of the material reminded him of the Chinese philosophy of yin yang. Harmony is created through opposites, motion and stillness, odd and even, rigid and soft, dark and light. When designing the work, Gamzar incorporated two polarities with paper fans to convey his concept using parametric design to analyze the shape and simulate the overall structure. The natural pattern of galvanized iron is juxtaposed with the smoothness of brass. Gamdra used the folding technique to present the changes of light and shadow, resulting in an accordion-shaped installation. After discussing the feasibility of the design, trimming all the components and rounds of experimentation, Master Yu and Gamdra determined the sequence and the direction of buckling including ways of folding and closing. Following the alignment of all components, they proceeded to create the ideal buckling structure by folding and hammering. Wired edges were added to the tops and bottoms of each component before the process known as buckling. It is a technique that connects all components with a hammer. Buckling can be categorized based on the position of the joints, whether sheet connection or corner connection. Through the collaborative work of Gamzar's creative designs and Master Yu's skillful technique, 12 galvanized iron components were assembled into a set of three accordion-shaped artwork. The three wishes includes the wishes of the return, cast copper plates, the mirror of hope, bronze mirrors, and the guardian of hope, door knockers. Being the apprentice of Master Liu Wingshun, sculptor Fansen Lam hopes to bring copper casting to a new aesthetic level through the collaboration. With over 50 years of experience, Master Liu's craftsmanship brings Fansen's creations to life. His crafting process starts with the creation of the crafting mold, an air-dried sculpted clay model covered with silicon gel. As the mold is formed, liquid wax is poured into it. After cooling, the wax will harden to become the desired form. A complex form has to be divided into parts and welded together to become a wax tree. The wax tree is then placed in a steel container where the plaster is poured into. Hardened plaster is heated so that all the wax wrapped around the plaster is melted and a hollow plaster mold is formed. Copper is then melted at a high temperature of over 1,000 degrees Celsius and injected into the plaster mold. The plaster mold is cooled by immersing in water, enabling the copper inside to solidify. The plaster is then removed and an oxidized patina could be created by dipping the work into a special chemical solution. After coloring and finishing, the work is heated repeatedly and coated with a wax layer to enhance durability.
Craft calligraphy contains 60 Chinese characters with the radical jin, meaning gold or metal, written by calligrapher Hua Guo on rice paper. Each character is closely tied with our daily lives, customs, and culture. Coppersmiths Nathan Wong and Hazel Lee reinterpreted each brushstroke on brass by hand with fret saws, creating one-of-a-kind textures that machine-operated laser cuttings cannot replicate, embodying the passion for handcrafted metalwork of the three craftsmen. After conceptualizing Nathan and Hazel's creative framework, Hua Gore created the 60 Chinese characters with his sleek and graceful brushstrokes. The calligraphy was then digitized, printed, and pasted on a 1.2 millimeter thick copper plate before carving. By drilling a small hole with a pendant drill, a saw blade could then pass through the brass. Nathan and Hazel then carved out each character intricately by hand using a fret saw. Each character has different brushstrokes and complexity, taking an average of five hours to complete. Eventually, each plate is immersed in gasoline to remove the paste of calligraphy, symbolizing the birth of the work, craft calligraphy. Metal is known for its outstanding durability and conductivity, making it an ideal material for tableware. Embroidering modern artistic taste onto traditional craftsmanship strikes a balance between aesthetics and practicality. By appreciating the beauty of tableware, culinary culture can be passed on from generation to generation. Dimple Yuan and Ivan Chang teamed up with traditional craftsmen Luk Shu Choi and Luk Kung Choi to refine a copper still by adapting techniques from handcrafting herbal tea brass vessels. Through the partnership, the Look brothers refined the Olympic still for the young distillers, propelling the art of copper craft forward by introducing new elements to a traditional piece, reinterpreting the traditional craft of copper hammering that once represented the culture of Hong Kong. Dimple and Ivan were intrigued by the form and texture of traditional copper herbal tea vessels that Pinky had produced, which inspired them to refine the Alembic still using traditional copper hammering techniques for herbal tea vessels. The production process starts with a large copper sheet, which is then cut down to size, much like tailoring fabric. To fabricate a large copper still takes around 30 days. Both the Look brothers think the most challenging part is to form the shape, which has to be very precise to be connected seamlessly with the body of the still. From forging, welding, and polishing, each demands the craftsman's utmost concentration and finesse, amounting to the refined creations by the Luck brothers all along the way. The silver teapot with jade eye inlay represents the collaborative work between contemporary artisan and metalsmith Yves Chan and traditional gem setting craftsman Jimmy Hui. Made from sterling silver, the design of the teapot blends the aesthetics of the East and the West. Utilizing traditional raising and sinking techniques, Yves Chan shaped the flat silver sheet onto hollow and three-dimensional forms by repeated hammering and then welding the pieces together. The lid is a centerpiece of the teapot. Yves used chasing and repousse techniques to emboss the unique motif. An icy jadeite from Myanmar is then inlaid on the top of the teapot lid by Master Jimmy Hui. 
In the exhibition, Eve Chan is also showcasing his independent works, Whale, Different Angles, and The Flask. Imbued with Eve's creativity and playfulness, Whale is a set of sake pitcher and small cups with a lively image made of tin through raising and sinking. Inspired by the idea of angles, each cup of different angles is named according to the number of angles on the lip of the cup. Circle, zero. Almond, two. Quadrilateral, four. Heptagon, seven. Octagon, eight. And decagon, ten. Coupled with the flask, the set captures the playful serenity of enjoying alcohol. Local traditional craftsmen Peter Ng, Luke Shu Choi, and Luke Kung Choi collaborated to create this engraved copper pot. The Luke brothers first created the copper pot through forging. Master Ng further engraved the pot with vines, spiral shaped patterns, and the four gentlemen in Chinese classic literature. Master Ng aptly uses a wide range of hammers and chisels with different dimensions and angles to carve a myriad of patterns onto metal objects, which are fixed onto a specially made wax spherical mount to be chiseled. During the process, Master Ng usually stands to make his body more flexible. The sharper the curves he works on, the more his body has to bend. With Master Ng's refined techniques, a dazzling scenery of seasons is engraved, bringing the work Four Seasons to life. We hope you enjoy the virtual guided tour of our exhibition. On behalf of Preps and Peel and the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office London, thank you very much for joining us today. Please follow our social media here. We look forward to seeing you at next year's event. Thank you and goodbye.